Jaden Reed, Dontavian Wicks, Luke Musgrave, Tucker Craft, Carl Brooks. Could the Packers' best draft pick actually be one of their last draft picks from this loaded class? Trevor Sikama from Pro Football Focus, their lead draft analyst, joins us on today's show to talk about these young, talented Packers players. Plus, help us preview Packers Bucks on Sunday at a cold Lambeau Field. All of that on a loaded Locked on Packers. Let's go. You are Locked on Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet and the show for fans who know what happened. They want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers. Their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. They help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. We have Trevor Sikama from Pro Football Focus on the show today. I am under the weather. We're playing hurt today. I'm on the injury report but we're practicing. We're going to play through it. Um, and speaking of, um, A.J. Dillon has a broken thumb. Can he grip the ball? Can he not? They're working through that. We don't know, but Aaron Jones, for his part, says he is confident. He's feeling good. He's hoping he can play on Sunday. That would be a pretty big deal. And we saw both Jaden Reed and Dontavian Wicks return to the practice field On Thursday, that's a big one, even if it was a a shorter modified practice, but both of them being limited, Jaden Reed not being in concussion protocol, a big deal. And and Dontavian Wicks said he thought his ankle was pretty bad. They thought it might be a high ankle sprain. The fact that he's back out there is a pretty important uh, part of this because it doesn't look like Christian Watson is going to be able to play. Eric Stokes uh, practicing once again, Jair Alexander practicing once again. So they could have a pretty healthy secondary. If you have Carrington Valentine, Eric Stokes, and Jair Alexander, you're in pretty good shape to go up against Baker Mayfield, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and those boys. So um, some good injury news, a mixed bag, I would say, generally on the injury news front, but um, just wanted to give you that update as we head towards Sunday. Let's get into our conversation with Trevor. Joining me now from Pro Football Focus, his first year as the lead draft analyst. Of course, we had a little... Buccaneers talk in there as well. His Twitter handle is, after all, Tampa Bay Trey, Trevor Sikama. And and Trevor, I'm really, I'm really excited to talk to you today because um, the Packers right now are relying so heavily on young players, rookies, second year guys. And especially in this skill room, I want to start there. You've got Jaden Reed and Dontavian Wicks who are really coming on strong. The underlying metrics for Dontavian Wicks are wild, like some of his mm-hmm. man coverage numbers. Um, even Malik Heath, coming on and making, he makes the go-ahead touchdown catch. Luke Musgrave, Tucker Craft, Lucas Van Ness hasn't even like scratched the surface yet. Let's start with a rookie class here, though. Who stands out to you, good, bad, and different? Yeah, one, it was a huge rookie class, right? And so you looked at this Packers team, and you know, obviously the, the part that everybody talked about last offseason is Aaron Rodgers is gone, so you're mm-hmm. kind of turning the page with Jordan Love, and that was a big part of the conversation that was on the national level. But I think if you really paid attention to this team, they were turning the page in a lot of ways. You know, David Bakhtiari, like, okay, is he back? Is he not back? Kind of a thing. But even that aside, you had so many rookies that you drafted last year, and it was a very clear sign that with Rodgers out, we're kind of ushering in a new era of a lot of different parts of this roster, whether it was going to be starters, depth players. The identity of the team was going to change. And For them to get as much production as they have from certainly like guys at the top, like, all right, you, you 
you figure the tight end duo would have been able to produce, you know, Van Ness. Okay. It was going to be in and out of the lineup. Cause you, you got a lot of guys in that front seven anyways, but like Carrington Valentine, Dontavian yeah. Wicks, like though, like those dudes stepping up is huge because dude, for, for any team to get a starting caliber corner in the seventh round is mm -hmm. nuts. That's a premium position that you often have to overdraft within the top 50 because there's so few guys that have that confidence and ability to be able to play that at NFL level. So Valentine has been perfect. Certainly it's up and down. Like the, the, it's just natural for the position, but to find a player like that, that you believe in from the seventh round, that's been awesome. Wicks. I, he has been super impressive to me. You mentioned some of the underlying numbers for him. He grades pretty well for us in our database, but the over the middle stuff has been so impressive to me. He's that dig player in their offense that's going, you know, 15, 20 yards over the middle, finding the soft spot in the coverage. But there have been plenty of times, too, where he knows he's about to take a lick. Like, he knows he's about to get hit, and he's been really strong. He's been – I've seen him bounce off some tackles, create some force missed tackles, which I didn't I, I didn't expect him really to do in his rookie yeah. season. And so – those are two against guys. the Chargers where he bounced off about six Chargers defenders. It's like, who is this guy? I know. And he just starts sprinting with it. And like, I know his explosiveness scores are pretty good at the combine, but like the 40 yard dash wasn't great. And so for him to have that getaway speed, it just shows you, you know, how much confidence he's playing with. And I think that's a really big deal for both him and Valentine. So honestly, from a really deep draft class that they had with a lot of guys, those two as day three players that are really standing out are super impressive to me. Cause I think the guys who were drafted earlier than them will eventually come into their own. But if you're able to count on these guys as well, well, all of a sudden that class and the depth of it allows you to kind of create that new young identity that they were searching for. Yeah. And I, I didn't even mention Carl Brooks and Kobe Wooden who have each come in and, and contributed for them in a real way in that uh, interior defensive line. Um, I, I don't know if, if you know this and I haven't said this on the show, so I'm just going to drop the stat. Now there are two Packers receivers right now or pass catchers who, if Luke Musgrave comes back, have a chance to break Sterling Sharp's rookie receptions record Two, they could have two guys in the same season do it. Jaden Reed is seven catches away, almost certainly going to do it. Um, so pretty, pretty remarkable. Um, it, Luke Musgrave would have to go on an absolute heater and he'd have to get back fast now and in a hurry, but. Right. That that is that is still rarefied air um, for this team. You mentioned the team build. What did you think of this idea? Because this is the youngest pass catching battery. If you do quarterback and and pass catchers, only the expansion Browns had a younger group. Mm. There There is teams who will say well, we need to get veterans. You know, Houston goes out and they get Robert Woods. You see this all the time to buoy a young quarterback in these young school groups. The Packers said, you know what? We're not going to do that. We're going to take our lumps with these young players and we're going to have them grow together. Just as sort of a thought exercise with team building, especially as someone who is so focused on the draft. What do you think of that plan? And, and how do you think it's played out? Well, I think it's played out very well for them. Clearly with them getting as much production as they have from Reed, from Wicks, you know, from Dobbs and Watson last year, who I think have, have been able to improve. So, I think that it's gone well for them, but man, for them to have that plan, you have to have a ton of faith in the coaches that you have on your coaching staff to develop these players. Like there are a lot of coaching staffs think around the NFL that, you know, for example, I, I grew up in Tampa. You mentioned the Tampa Bay trade handle the joke slash, not really a joke was that Gruden when he was there, he didn't want rookies. Like he literally only wanted veterans. Uh, if you were under the age of 25, he was like reverse Leonardo DiCaprio. Like he didn't want to have anything to do with you. If you were under the age of 25, he wanted veterans because these are guys that have been around the block. They've been around the league, all that kinds of stuff. And it's tough to do an extreme in both ways, but it's really tough to do that. Certainly with rookies, knowing that a lot of these guys aren't going to be these first round caliber players and you're, and yet you're expecting really meaningful snaps from them so to have this kind of strategy i don't know if it was like the number one ideal plan for them like maybe they they eyed a couple of veterans out there whether it was via trade or bringing somebody in that okay yeah. maybe the price tag didn't work out it wasn't exactly what they needed to do but very clearly they were okay not panicking with having a much younger receiver group it's funny they've had a couple of primetime games this year and you know, they'll mention, I think they mentioned in, in, in 
however many they had, it's like, oh, Christian Watson's the veteran of the group. And he's like, what, 23, 24, yeah. something like that, whatever. So it is funny when you say it like that, because it's just not often that you have a situation like they do. But for that situation being there, they clearly have a lot of confidence, like I said, in the coaches to develop these young players the right way, uh, knowing that it was going to take a little bit of time. And I think they're already seeing good investment from both the second year guys and then the first year guys as well. So it's a good sign. All right. More with Trevor Sikama from Pro Football Focus in just a second here on Locked on Packers. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top-tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. They know that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. Thankfully, LinkedIn, with the process being so intuitive, quick, and easy, has made it so that small businesses have a chance to find the candidates quicker and easier. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions to apply. And Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today, here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day. With the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Yeah, and, and you know, Jordan Love has been a big part of that because he's played well enough that it it hasn't it hasn't hindered their growth and vice versa. There was a time, I think, in the middle of the season, October especially, where you had guys, I mean, they can't even run stick, like they can't even run simple concepts. And right. you got guys running the same routes or running into each other. And you're just sort of like, guys, this is, we can't, we can't do this. Um, that's gone. And now you're seeing Jordan Love play in this kind of way. Um, what, what have your thoughts from the outside, you know, as someone who's, you know, probably not broken down every snap of Jordan Love, but just, <laughs> and that's obviously totally fine. Um, your, your thoughts on his growth and development, especially from where he started at Utah State and coming into the league pretty raw. Yeah, you know, obviously a lot of time to develop behind Aaron Rodgers, but ask any NFL player and they'll tell you the same thing. There's nothing like regular season snaps. Yeah, like no play. no amount of preseason snaps, no amount of, you know, time in the meeting room can really do what regular season snaps do for you. So, we always knew that like this was really going to be the moment for Jordan Love. And I thought, you know, for the first whatever it was like 5 6 weeks of the season, there was a lot of hot and cold, but I remember watching that New Orleans Saints game specifically in the mm. early parts of the season when they had that huge comeback and the Saints storm out to a big lead and you think like, all right, here we go. You know, this is just kind of going to be a rough year for them. And then Love, it wasn't perfect. And yeah, I think Derek Carr went out in that game and it was just kind of, it, it was it was a Saints collapse in ways, but he still got them to that point. You know, like right. he still got them to that big comeback win. And I thought that that was a moment where it's like, all right, we saw good stuff from him. You know, when it's going well, he seems to be a guy who can really play within confidence. Now you fast forward that a little bit, take away this week's game against the Giants. And prior to that, he, I mean, he had a stretch of, what was it, three, four games where, Shoot, look like top 10 quarterback in this league yeah. right now. So he was playing extremely well. And I think if you take the Giants game into account, it's a reminder that, all right, we saw a lot of the good. We saw the ceiling from him. The floor is still a little bit lower than what we want, right? Because there were all sorts of missed throws, especially at the beginning of that game. And I can't, I, I was talking about this earlier this week on the PFF NFL show, but there was one throw at the beginning of the game. I think it was like on a third and short, like a third and three, third and two. And it was just a simple out route. He, he had whoever. Airmailed it. And he just, and, but not only did he airmail it, like he airmailed it. And if you go back and you watch the throw, I mean, the technique's horrible. I mean, he's kicking his leg out like a major league pitcher. The ball is coming out way too high. And it's like, dude, what, like that's the part where it's like, come on. Like it's got to be, if anything, it's got to be fundamental, especially on the big money downs. It's where all the quarterbacks really are able to thrive and really able to con con convert. But you keep that game going third quarter, second or third quarter and fourth quarter. I mean, he, I think had a 
80 ish PFF grade for the, th- for the second half. I, I think his PFF grade uh, in the fourth quarter alone was like 85, 86, something like yeah. that for a passing grade. So he clearly, even, even in the games where it's very inconsistent for him, he's got the ability to do it. So the story of Jordan love for me right now, and as a draft guy, we talk about team needs all the time, right? Cause we're updating the mock draft simulator. Um, we're projecting like what teams might go after when it comes to the off season. And for a little bit there at the beginning of the year, we, kept quarterback as one of the options for the Packers. But as of late, it's very clear that it's like, okay, you can invest in this guy. Jordan Love is certainly showing you enough to invest in and not think you've got to like take a quarterback in this draft to like, um, you know, give yourself some sort of a safeguard or anything like that. I think that they're very comfortable with what he's been able to show this season. Yeah. And, and you mentioned, you know, he looked like a top 10 quarterback for a month there. I think even with the giants game, he's still in the top 10 in EPA per play. This Packers offense is 10th in DVOA. So they've still found ways to produce, um, even with a lot of those inconsistencies. The, the the highs are high and the lows are low, but that makes it fun. Like uh, Packer fans are spoiled by quarterback play, no question about it. But like uh, what I was kind of saying before the season, it's like, I just know it's going to be fun. Like I just know that the high end stuff is really fun. And we had Jay Sternberger on the show, former Packers tight end. And he was like, guys, there are going to be some times and some throws and some games where Jordan looks like a baby deer out there, but then there's going to be those moments where you just go, Holy crap. I can't believe he did that. Yeah. And we saw, we saw both on, on Monday and, and they were still almost able to win the game. If Joe Barry could have gotten a stop against the third string quarterback, um, you, you win the game and, and that's, uh, that's the margin right now in the league. Let's talk about this game on Sunday here. Um, I, I call it an old school NFC central matchup. Um, Packers bucks with playoff playoff stakes. This is, this is going to be a fun one. Um, the flip side of the quarterback question is Baker Mayfield in terms of he's trying to prove he's still an NFL starter, mm-hmm. not, Hey, I can be your long-term franchise guy. Hey, no, I, I build around me a little bit at least, and let's go see what we can do. Um, in, in a game like this, are the Buccaneers set up to have Baker not have to go win it or, or do they have other things that you feel like they can lean on in this one? Cause the defense not playing at the level we're used to seeing with Todd Bowles right. and his group. Yeah, no, the defense is a problem for this team. So that's an area where I think the Packers still have their advantage. As long as those young receivers are able to play the way that we've seen them play throughout the rest of this, throughout the season to this point, they should be able to beat a Buccaneers defense that um, just gives up too many mistakes. But on the offensive side of the ball, beginning of the year, this team was very, very one-dimensional. They were about six games into this season and were on pace to have the lowest yards per carry average in the run game since like the 1994 New England Patriots. It was like it was it was it was it was it was I think they were averaging 2.7 yards per carry like six weeks into the year. And we haven't seen a number below three in Oh my gosh, I think over almost 20 years, but you got to go back to early 90s before you get below. I think 2.8 was that Patriots number. So it was not good. And you look at the interior of this offensive line, starting a rookie in Cody Mock. Um, they're starting two veterans. Well, one veteran, Matt Filer, and then another one in Robert Hainsey, who is more drafted to just be kind of like a versatile interior offensive lineman, not necessarily a full-time starter. Right. And and you could just tell. They were getting whooped between the tackles and Rashad White, who I like, I think is at his best a one, two kind of a running back in a committee where it, where he leans more towards the scat back third down back receiving back kind of a role. And instead Tampa doesn't have any other backs on the roster that they are, that's really striking any sort of fear or putting any pressure on the defense. So he's been the early down back too. And that's not really his game. So he's really struggled in that regard. But as of late, it's been better. Mock is playing a lot better now because he's got a lot more snaps under his belt, which is great. The two tackles, Tristan Wurst, we know he's an all-pro. Uh, Luke Gadecki, who was really up and down, and and that might be putting it lightly over the last year, has now really settled into a home at right tackle. So the offensive line's playing better. Everybody knows the receivers in Tampa. They're good enough. But it feels as though... This offense is in the best place it has been yet this year. And because of that, we're seeing Baker be able to complete some of those big plays. Like you watch that Falcons game and uh, very inconsistent, kind of like classic Baker Mayfield. It was just a very up and down game. 
But when they needed it most, he hit two really big throws in that game uh, and it got them the win. So as the team has improved around him, specifically the offensive line in front of him and the run game's gotten a little bit better, they have been able to take the ball out of his hands a little bit more and made the, make the offense a little bit more balanced. Because that's the thing, right? He's not going to be a quarterback that you want throwing the ball 50 times a game. Baker Mayfield's right. like a, you know, anywhere from 25 to 35 throws a game type of a quarterback. But you start getting into into like the mid-high 30s, anything in the 40s, and you're like, okay, we're probably throwing the ball too much, and he's not going to be consistent enough for us to win this football game. So that, to me, is a little bit of a synopsis of, of where this offense is right now. All right, we're going to finish up with our pal Trevor Sikama from Pro Football Focus here on Locked on Packers in just a second. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at BetterHelp. The holiday season is a wonderful time for a lot of people, but for others, it can be a particularly trying time. It can bring on thoughts of loneliness, of feeling sad. And and sometimes it's not even just the holidays. It's the weather. It's the winter. It's the light. It's the fact that it's dark at 4.30 in the afternoon. It helps to have someone to talk to. Whether or not your family gives gifts during the holidays, you get to define how you give to yourself on the holidays are a great time to do that. So whether it's by starting therapy, going easy on yourself during the tough moments, or treating yourself to a day of complete rest, remember to give yourself some love this holiday season. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch anytime at no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. And thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Yeah, and and I was just looking through their, their running back room as we were doing the show yesterday, our crossover show, and I was like, is this the smallest running back room in the league? Like it's, everyone is, is like five ten or or smaller or yeah. I, I, no one on, no one in that running back room weighs more than 215 pounds. Like that, they, that's they wild. Had a, <laughs> they had, they had a fourth down. They went forward on fourth down against the Falcons and they sort of telegraphed what they were going to do. Cause they had multiple eligible, like offensive linemen, like to the left of the line of scrimmage. So it was like, okay, they're very clearly going to run to the left. And so the Falcons all knew that they were going to run to the left, but still the offensive line gets whooped. And then the second Rashad white gets hit on a like outside run. I think it was just like a sweep. He's not going to break that tackle. He's not like fighting hard for it, you know, trying to get the extra and that's not who he is. So that's another thing where I, I believe the, the struggles at the beginning of the year were more of, Dave Canales, who is the first time play caller, offensive coordinator now, he came over from Seattle. He's had to go through not only the growing pains of being a first time play caller, but also like, all right, I want to stay balanced, but we don't exactly have the horses to be able to run that kind of a race. Right. So it's it's it, it's definitely been a process of kind of figuring out what works and what doesn't, knowing that you because because that was the catch 22, right? Is all right, we don't have the run game we want. But we know that if we continue to put the ball in Baker's hands, he's going to be really high variance. And there's a Mm. good chance that that's not going to be enough for us to win the game. Right. It was like this. We can't stay balanced, but we have to stay balanced kind of a thing. And now they're figuring it out a little bit more. I think it's at least a a, a better equation or percentage of what they think they can do and, and be effective that way. Yeah. Banging your head against the brick wall. Eventually you might break through. And that seems like kind of what they've done the last month. Their top yeah, 10 it really does. In, uh, their top 10 success rate and EPA per play it, it, running the ball over the last month. So um, it, it, they, they found a little bit something. Last thing I want to ask you about here, um, this defense, a lot of familiar faces for Packers fans who who remember 2020 all too well. Um, and yet defensively, they they are a shell of that team 
Um, even if some of those those guys, when they play and when they're healthy, are still really, really good, why why hasn't it been um, as as good as they thought it could continue to be? Considering a lot of these guys are still like guys like Carlton Davis, Jamel Dean, they're young. You know, it is a lot of familiar names, but it's a very different story here in 2023. For I would say, I would say two guys in particular. One is Devin White, who. Devin White, when the last time that they played them in that 2020 postseason, as you're kind of referencing, White was having, he was on a tear. You know, like he was having basically like the best five games of of his NFL career. And after that postseason, you remember, like, I remember watching shows on ESPN, NFL Network, and people were like, yeah, Devin White's the best linebacker in the league. And I'm like, what? You got to watch beyond just the five games that just recently happened. And, And people were talking about him as the best linebacker in the league. And he is certainly, that narrative has regressed as his play has gotten back more towards what his normal is. And that's a very high variance player. Like he started off pretty well this year. He's been in and out of the lineups that hasn't, hasn't helped, but I would say that he, his presence not being nearly what it was in that game in 2020 would hurt. And then Shaq Barrett's the other one, like Shaq Barrett was in 2020 coming off of the 19 and a half sack season. And so he was okay. Maybe not that 20 sack season type of a player, but a really disruptive edge rusher. He's since sort of declined because he's getting up there in age. Anyways, he's also torn his Achilles since then. And he's just not that same edge presence. They don't really have anybody else outside of him. Vita Vey and Kalijah Kansi are fantastic interior players. And they're going to build around those guys, but Joe Try and Show Yanka didn't take that next step as a pass rusher. Yeah. They've got some young guys, Yaya Diaby and um and Marquise Watts, but those are those guys are still rookies. So in a Todd Bull system, they're not really playing a lot. They're more of just like packaged players. So those two might be the best two on the roster for disruption, but they're not going to play a lot just because Bulls doesn't really play rookies like that. So man, it, it, because of that, they're worse up front. They're not as good as getting after the quarterback. They're not nearly as good at linebacker. Levante David, for as much as he's incredible, and I think a future Hall of Famer, uh, he is three years older. White's Mm. not playing nearly as well. The corners aren't playing nearly as well. Um, They had Mike Edwards as the other secondary safety spot uh, as with um, Jordan Whitehead. Both of those guys gone now, and it's Ryan Neal who's really struggled this year. Antoine Winfield Jr. is great, but he can't do it all as a secondary player. So it's a lot of familiar names, but each one is not playing as well as they were at that time. And because of it, just the unit as a whole is much less effective and much more susceptible than it was back then. Well, it's going to be a fun matchup, I think. A good one. Uh, Packers-Bucks in in December at Lambeau Field. Um, and and you're going to remind me of Brad Johnson and Warren Sapp and, and a lot of fun memories for me growing up and falling in love with football. Trevor, appreciate the time, man. Our, our former colleague here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Uh, we miss you around here, but happy to see that you are you are crushing and we appreciate the time. I appreciate it, Peter. Anytime, my friend. All right. Thanks to Trevor for joining the show. Great to talk to him. Uh, we'll be back on Sunday afternoon after the game streaming on our Locked On Packers YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers. And anytime you want to come hang out with us live, like we will be on Sunday. Hopefully I can speak by then in a normal voice where I don't sound like I've been gargling with gravel, but here we are. Uh, Go subscribe to us on our YouTube page so you can stay locked on Packers.